the world famous Mr. Zach. You're all far too kind. I got, you upgraded. You went world famous today. I, I love it. Like Scott, first off, give Scott a round of applause. <laughs> Scott, you've been holding it down for the underground, and we cannot thank you enough. Speaking of people we'd like to thank, ladies and gentlemen, for the final celebrity guest interview for VisionCon 2022, we saved the best for last. This man needs no introduction, but he's gonna get one anyway. He's the host with the most, Space Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the one, the only, Mr. George Lowe. guys go all in. Only the best for you. And the great Sonny Chirac with the, with the guitar music. They told me years ago he, uh, he met Lazo. They went to a studio in New York, put on a huge reel of tape, sat down. They had the basic song from uh, Eddie Horst, the late great Eddie Horst, and just sat there and watched Sonny riff. I says, okay, well, we got that track. And he went through, I think, 18 or 19 tracks of just riffs with the basic tracks still holding, you know, the rhythm and the main theme that you guys know so well. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Glad you guys did. Elderly, rambling, fat man entertained several. And <laughs> wait, we have two runners already in Sector R. Two runners are making it for the door. Or as they'll later be regaled in the local press, the smart ones. We were bad oh, they turned you off. <laughs> See there? That's what happens when you try to talk while daddy's on. <laughs> I slipped him 20 before I came out. You're screwed. Thank you guys for coming out on a Sunday and my... Uh, <laughs> If only they had done a panel on Friday, then they, then they would have had something. Now you got me exhausted. Still funny, but it, see, he's yawning too. Don't do that, then I'll do it. Quick, <laughs> new Starbucks depositories for everybody. I'll have a latte. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> I said, oh my God, I gotta be careful. There are kids in here too, okay. So I can only, no, really, it's okay? God bless him, it's like my family, twist him early. My mom's like, you know, no, that show's educational, let's watch The Addams Family. <laughs> Concert pianist, she could have been, I swear. Studied at conservatory, blew the socks off of everyone in the auditions. All these PhDs and famous musicians, there's still a merits prize in Chopin. That was her teacher. Really? learned from the leading Chopin teacher in the world and uh, when in the audition all these girls were coming out crying ah, I miss the G major <laughs> mom goes in takes the hardest piece of the book aces it and they look at her you, you knew she was on a roll she told me the whole story rest her soul uh, all these doctors and, and brilliant composers the room just got more and more quiet while she played. And they gave each other that holy moly, you know, this, this is one we're keeping. So they said to her, here's the best part, if you want to know where Space Ghost comes from, here you go. They look at her and they say, um, that, was, that was very good, darling. Um, in the book in front of you, and it was one of those music books, you see, in, in the book in front of you, uh, play for us piece number 893. And she said, my hand to God, I'll never forget it. She said, oh, I don't read music. <laughs> that was mom. And they, they were just astounded. And they said, okay, we thank you for six months, darling, but then you have to learn how to read music. 
And she got to, you know, she used to tell me, well, well, I didn't, I never learned to read. She learned to read. But a lot of the time, she had a photographic memory. So she would just listen to the next best students go in the practice rooms. And it would be like, uh, oh, we're going to play a Turkish rondo and uh, you know, do, it, do it in C. And she would just listen to them, memorize the piece, and then go and play it better. So, it's, so that's kind of where it's based, goes, you know, it's that shoot from the hip mentality, like, you know, yeah, who needs a script? Scripts are for the weak, which of course made me a hit with the writers. <laughs> hey, we worked on this all week. <laughs> Three of us didn't even go in the back of the house and, and sleep or anything. And two of them didn't take drugs for an hour. <laughs> And those two people are... We cut you off just in time. <laughs> so it's good to know that talent's just baked into the uh, low family bloodline. It's, it's weird stuff. It's selective talent, man. It's, you know, we didn't have any kind of gifted thing when I was coming up, so they figured, you know, well, well, the boy's not right in the head, you know. And thankfully, they sent me to the shrink who determined I had artistic ability. The school shrink said, no, looked at, looked at my mom and said, really, the teacher's the one who needs to be down here. Because they, they knew I was bored. But it, it took the PhDs to come in and go, no, he's bored. He's very artistic. Oh, no, we have more runners. They're all, they're all here leaving. I'm sorry, I, we lied about the George Foreman thing just to get people in. <laughs> the Miracle Grill. It's the new George Foreman Grill. Shouldn't they have like nine more grills in different sizes for all the sons named George? It's George Foreman Grill number seven. George, I just thought that. That's pretty good. Huh? Absolutely. Yeah. It's patented. Almost as good as taking a trip to Bob's Big Smelly Crack. Sidewalk bleaching. <laughs> it's not dirty until the beat. The beat makes everything dirty. Hello, Debbie's Gaping Trench. Backhoe service. And then there was total silence. How's the kid holding up off to the analyst yet? He'll be fine, don't worry about him. Walks in tomorrow. Hey, Dad, look what I can do now after going to the panel. <laughs> Timmy's voice comes crashing in. That's what happened to me. I was 13. It was like, hey, Mom, what's for supper? <laughs> there was a voice coming out of me. It's not me. What was it? I'm sorry. So we'll do questions. We'll do answers. I'm casual. Whatever you want to do. Absolutely. I had a few that I'd like to talk to, but uh, didn't know if we'd get to. Yeah, well, I saw you had a clipboard with, like, some stuff written on it. Real so professional. I, I didn't want to deny you any enjoyment. It's just my Barbra Streisand cosplay. Your Barbra Streisand. <laughs> well, God knows I, I do love me the Barbara. <laughs> That's right. Which is why I was able to scat with Branford Marsalis, because I'm such a Barbara fan. It was great when I did that, by the way. I don't, you, anybody remember the episode with Branford Marsalis? Really? No one's ever seen that one? Enlighten them. You saw it, didn't you? I did. No, I don't know. <laughs> we had him on, and this was another one of those moments that kind of caused them to start using outtakes. We didn't have offices yet. I swear, Cartoon was that young. We had no offices. And Lazo would be like, who's not, uh, who's out this way? And they'd say, oh, so-and-so, I'm going to go use his desk. We had no offices. So they had me in a cubicle. Uh, Branford was in New York at CNN. They were taping him. And uh, we ran out of tape. And he said, uh, just casual stuff. Like, uh, so what are you listening to, Space Ghost? And I said, oh, I just got Miles Davis at the wooden nickel. <laughs> and I could not have sounded like I was setting off Caucasian alarms all over the building. I could not have sounded 
like any more like the white guy pretending I knew about jazz. And he said, oh, come on, Space Ghost, you don't know any serpent's tooth. And I said, oh, yes, I do, count it off. And, and you know, there's, first off, there's no known horror in the universe like having a Marsalis count you off. Because it's like, you either bring it or you don't. And he, he goes quickly with serpent's tooth, so it was like, one, two, one, two, three. And I had to be... First verse again. And then we start scatting. Well, here comes Lazo from like 18 offices away, running. Why? Why? White for time. White for the time. And he said, Brainford. This Mike Lazo in Atlanta. Do you mind faking that one more time? That was so good. I just got to get that on tape. That's how that interview happened. That became the methodology. We would have scripts. Very funny, talented guys. Even though they just screwed me and kicked me out of an aqua teen, I waited a year to see. <laughs> they have the Space Ghost cop or the George Locock figure walk in, hit two aliens with a club, and that's the end of the scene. That's it? Yeah. And I call my buddy Matt at the network. Matt's good with me, Matt Foster. I said, Matt, what happened? Um, we uh, forgot to tell you they, uh, they ran long, so they cut you. <laughs> And I'm like, they, they just let the aliens for like 11 and a half minutes say F 10,000 times a lot. You take 16 of those out and at least let me go, I have no lines in this episode. <laughs> Which would have been enjoyable. I apologize to those of you sitting in the gas passing section at the very back. <laughs> the, the ball always going hide in the back. Once you're done passing gas, you're more than welcome to join us up here on the front. If, unless you're having a crisis of some sort, in which case the folks who aren't passing gas would be very happy you stay right where you are. <laughs> it's that new adult swim superhero, intestinal parasite man. <laughs> and his able-bodied helper, Squid Girl. Oh, darn it, I'm supposed to sign this contract and I just ran out of ink. No problem! <laughs> Thank you, Squid Girl. Show, show tested amazingly well. It's another $380 a year with Cartoon Network. Thank you, Squid Girl, for all you do. So sorry. For what? He never got to any of the list. He just sat down and riffed for an hour. What are you talking about? This is the He's easiest there. interview of my life. Should I mention the sponsor for your first question? First question sponsor, the fine folks at Tongue Brothers Ball Game Wieners. They plump when you touch them. <laughs> they reached out to us. Yeah? <laughs> well, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Let her rip. No, do one, because, you know, I want to sure. be sure. equitable here. Well, I just want to say, George Lowe, Adult Swim Darling. Yeah, man. Cartoon Planet. Yeah. Brack. Brack. Unicorn. All of it. Seven years as the voice of the league on FX. Let's throw them into real shock. Go for it. Are we in a largely Republican state? Uh, depends on who you off. I opened the 15th presidential debate. I know, right? <laughs> and like my hipster friends are going, did you like have to get secret service clearance? And I'm like, no. I had my shoes off. Mom and I muted Jeopardy. I walked in the studio, reread one line, and we were done. Really? And the next thing you know, she's like, what channel? I said, well, let's put it on. And there I was doing, they wanted Sam Elliott, but Sam's like a half million dollars to get off the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Which in itself was a, that's a visual, isn't it? Very visceral. Sam Elliott for gas station toilet paper. I'll tell you what, that stuff shreds, man, that is no good at toilet paper. Here, Sam, try a new improved Quilted Northern. Well, I won't tell you what, friend, that's like a bunch of angels come down from heaven and wipe your behind. New Quilted Northern. Sam Elliott says, mine's good enough. How about you? 
So what I was gonna do, I was okay. going to start with asking you about your origin, how you kind of got in the industry, then I was gonna use my interview magic to lead you to talk like, about... It's not like a Marvel thing, George Lowe Origins. <laughs> George Lowe Origins. And all we got on a crappy radio station in the middle of nowhere. I was gonna lead you to talking about how your experience working in radio has uh, positively attributed to your acting career. I have fallen into so much, and it was just one of those things you could fall into when I was a kid. My friends, when I was 13, the voice thing was real. Hey, Mom, let's hurt supper. That was real. My friend shut me at a radio station at 13. I thought it would be hysterical. I don't come out for an hour. They're in there taking the application and giving me wire copy and saying, well, you got to have a demo. And the old guys had a ball with me. They thought it was great. Hey, listen, this kid's voice came in early. So they sat, and what happened was I didn't get it, but they encouraged me enough that by 15, we moved. I'm trying to think of a polite way to put this in mixed company. I was about to close escrow at Clearwater High with Miss Coppertone. Close escrow a good use of it. The synapses are trying to connect. Yes, we were about to. What, what, which, what did I do? I'm trying to think of the episode. Oh, when, when I was dating Sarah Jessica, Park, Jessica Parker in that one episode of the show, and I was like, yes, we did that activity. <laughs> I was about to do that activity with Miss Coppertone, and my mom says, we're moving. I was like, fantastic. And I'll give you a hint what the school was like. Half the time in literature, you'd hear the teacher, they couldn't say Gordon. Miss Gordon, that's not hard. They would land on the D's, which I couldn't stop laughing. I had to hide my face. It was like, I got a question about Beowulf, Miss Gordon. Hard D's. Miss Gordon, Miss Gordon, I got a question about the Beowulf. Is that really a monster? Read the book. And I told my mom, I said, if I'm going to survive in this town, i got to go to the radio station. And I went up. And they're all wearing the white shoes and the white belts and the Jamar golf pants, the Sansa belts, which is a polite way of saying, you know, well, if you get fatter at the country club, you, you know, these will give you an extra 10 pounds of room. They just push right out. And I went in and I said, your weekend guy sucks. And they left it. They, they couldn't get enough of how direct I was. It's like, here's this 15-year-old kid coming in telling us, and the weekend guy did suck. <laughs> so they gave me a, a tryout on air, live, and they were like, okay, well, Friday, Saturday's yours, but you gotta make the uh, Sunday morning religious shows. And yeah, that was tough, because we signed off midnight Saturday. Anyway, that was my entree to radio. And I used to put in fake commercials. Early on became a fan of Fireside Theater. Uh, loved their fake spots. And so I started cramming in fake spots and the boss would call. You'd see the red light going off. It's like, oh God, what have I done now? And it's like, hey, what was that? That that thing with the shoestrings and the lima beans and the enema cream? What was, oh, those, those, were, those were all in Casey Kasem. Yeah, I just lied my butt off. Oh, those are in Casey Case of those the building commercials. Oh, okay, well save me the record. It came on record then. People you never heard of. Sunday was cool. Sunday was, we had one or two guys who were uh, the morning religious shows. And one of them was like Pentecostal. Deafening. And the nicest guy you'd ever want to meet to be like, Hello, Brother George, how are you this week? How's your mom? Everything going good at home? And for the next half hour, he would go in the room, shut the door, and I'm like, thank heavens, it's soundproof. Relatively. And the room just shook for the next half hour. It was like, I am the world, I'm taking them inside and out, and they ended up in hell being tormented by demons. And at the, the end of the show, would come up a half hour later, he'd walk up and go, God bless you, uh, George. I'll see you next week. God bless the week. And it was, yeah. And then the Methodist guy had come in with a tape of his, very reserved, very well behaved. I got the Spanish guy, which was cool. And he, we'd always sit and talk 15, 20 minutes. He'd like, well, here's the tape. 
and that was it. It's like the town was so small. Those those were the three churches. But did the Sunday thing, ended up doing college radio, then from college radio, college TV. Senior year went, worked in real TV. They said, oh, you should be anchoring. You have your hair and you can read. So I went and did that for, those days are gone forever. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Elderly Bald Man. Here's your evening news. Crap around the world still falling apart. Now, Kiki Funiqua is with your five-day forecast. <laughs> I heard! We've got one, I swear, I was watching Color 10 this morning, and I swear, because the anchor girl I saw was, was not what you would call Playmate of the Year. The weather girl was almost tormenting her. She was admiring, I swear, she was admiring herself in the monitor. So it's like, a cold front's coming in tomorrow, and that's going to bring the chance of some severe thunderstorms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's working. Yeah, mommy's bad. The bad girl. Back to you, Debbie. We would like to thank Color 10 for all the advertisements and publicity they have given to us. I was in kind. They put a picture in my face. Did they ever run it? No. Oh, they never ran me? No, they no, they didn't. Oh, you saw it? Absolutely. I didn't see it. Yeah. Somebody got a tape of me? Uh, I believe so. Was it funny? Of course. Oh, well, God bless our friends at Color 10. <laughs> Especially the weather girl who was admiring her own flawless buttocks. Look at there! I used to kid the guy in Atlanta. I always said he freaked out and couldn't come in this week to do the show because he saw a pony shape in the Doppler. Which, if you read the manual for Doppler radar, that's the end of time. When you see the pony in the Doppler radar, that means it's over. Okay, so I, my answers are too long. No, uh, so, uh, so Space Ghost. Yeah, man. <laughs> So where, where do we go? We go to college radio, college TV. The where do, local where do we news, get to local, local news? news. Okay. Hottest radio station in the country at one point. Not we surprising. had a 64 share, which is like 83% of anyone in a 100 mile radius listening to the station. It was just pure insanity. And I left them to go to a guy across the street in Tampa who needed somebody funny. And we did pretty good for a while. But, oh my gosh, the stuff we got away with. When I got to Atlanta, and you know, I was a college, or not college, I was a VJ in Lakeland. They put a TV station on the air there called V32. So for a while, I was a VJ. But I used to get people, I'd pop out with my horrible sponsors, and women would be the ones getting me in trouble. My friend Jennifer in Atlanta was this big PR lady, and I said something politically incorrect to her one day. It was back when you could say anything, and people would just laugh. That's horrible, but it's funny. And she dared me. She said, I dare you to find a way to make that work in the closing credits. Bad call. Well, I used to do a great Don Pardo. It's not what it used to be, but you know, Saturday Night Live! And he always shook his hand to get that. He told me how he did it. Got to talk to him. And he says, oh, you always shake your hand like, and now, ladies and gentlemen, Alec Baldwin. That's how he did it. Daryl Hammond and I were working in Orlando together, and we used to do tooling pardos. Mine were different because I always put these horrible sponsors in. So here's my marketing friend chiding me in Atlanta. She says, I dare you to say what you just said to me on the radio tomorrow and make it a product. And I was like, okay, end of the show. The host looked over and said, okay, take it away, Don Lardo. We called him Lardo because I thought Pardo would sue me. Har har. But I said, uh, today's show brought to you by the world's smallest handheld vacuum, the Rock Goblin. Great for automobiles, RVs, or boats. Makes a thoughtful gift. Every woman loves a rock goblin.
hotline. <laughs> Immediately. Here's a red phone again. I'm like, damn it. I said, no, it's a hand on vacuum. What have you had to have But it was her. She knew the number. She called me and said, you son of a bitch, I was on the call part of I-285. <laughs> she almost drove her off a 10-story bridge. <laughs> I didn't think you were really going to do it. She dared you to do it. She dared me to do it. I said, you know, I'm that guy. Don't dare me to do it. I'll, I'll be down at the hardware store later with the kid buying, you know, buying all the fertilizer. <laughs> Terrible joke. I just, don't know, I just don't understand what she expected. Did she just expect you to not do that? I, I had you to. You said far worse. No, we had a different one every day. It was just so great. So I have to assume that's kind of where the we fake had, advertisements and cartoon play. We had candy pudding. No. Penny pudding, yeah. Sounds terrible, but it's not. Once you come out with a justification for the thing that sounds dirty, then you exonerate yourself. Pour dry mix and airtight sandy pants. Go for a stroll. In just 30 minutes, you've got savory panty pudding. Now in tapioca. See, and you transfer the blame not to you, but the people right. who just assume what you meant. <laughs> You're right in your own past. There's all oh, down in front. Oh, boy, well, this is uncomfortable. Oh, here, honey, here's your latte and nothing for the man killing himself. <laughs> here, enjoy your coffee, honey. I'll just sit here and eat worms and wet cigarette butts. <laughs> While Mrs. Russ Meyer III goes and wonders, maybe I should have gotten some for the, for the guest. No, enjoy that. Oh, that's tall and refreshing, isn't it? Taste the goat milk. I'll just sit here and <laughs> wait for the warm sense of our guests to waft over my nose. I mean it in a good way. Snap out of it. So every day we had these new horrible sponsorships. We, we got away with a lot, but that's what happened. It started getting weird there. Um, and my mom, again, God bless her, mom's like, eh, so the radio thing didn't work it out. Go see that friend of yours down at GBS. And they had done a uh, Mayberry reunion show, one of the best radio shows I ever did. I had uh, Hal Smith, who was Otis, um, Jack Dotson, who was Howard Sprague, the county clerk, and we got Goober. We had all three of them on, you know, telling stories. It was awesome. So I thought, okay, I do know Kate. Weasel my way in there, and that's how that happened. She said, oh. They're always doing promos, but they don't have anybody funny. So the next thing you know, it's like I'm going table to table, like the four brush man going, uh, I don't have a demo or anything, but if you want me to read that Animal House thing, I'll take your crack at it. And the next thing you know, it's like, hey, are you free for uh, Blues Brothers? And uh, it reached a point where my cycle of the funny ones, we did so much, I started making fun of it, like Animal House, again. Beastmaster, again. The Blues Brothers, again. Uh, but uh, that one, by the time I had 13 or so happy producers, that's what kicked me in the door at Cartoon. And Clay, rest his soul, Clay was the one, he said, you remember how your audition went? I said, no. He said, you don't remember the curtains? They had curtains over the booth so I couldn't look in the control room. And if I peeped, they had curtains in the control room. So I would have been shot. But I noticed that when I was going between lines and saying stay and stuff like, what's he supposed to sound like an idiot? And you would hear the glass. <laughs> I'm scoring with the glass. And it was great. And the next thing you know, it's like the one time I ever left an audition where I thought, if I don't get that, there's something wrong in the universe. And I got it. Generally speaking, the business is not a get it business. But you hit waves. You nail it, you nail it. Did the CBS guys use the glue thing? <laughs> I don't think they did. No? Because the guy said, so what do you, you know, they expect you to have some glamorous answer, the guy said yesterday. Uh, so what are you working on now? And I, I paused and said, uh, Glue commercials. You did not. I did. I did. I just got J.B. Weld. 
And kid who was my former assistant actually said, I put my muffler back on with that. <laughs> I'm like, well, it's a natural then. Space Ghost is distant, says it's great. Former assistant. So you do Space Ghost Coast to Coast for a number of years. Yeah. And then it evolves into Cartoon Planet. Yeah. Were, were you a fan of how it evolved from its kind of the original source material? I was a fan of making a living. <laughs> it's like, you know, anybody in this business, although I'll say this, I think that while my friend Jeff made a lot more money, I don't think Jeff has had half as much fun as I have, Jeff Lawrence, um, who you will not know unless I say, get a free lighted magnifier, what you call toll free, or call within the next five minutes for information on how to lose weight fast with Nutrisystem. That's my friend Jeff. And God help us, we used to do a morning show in Clearwater. One morning, I start playing my hands. He says, hey, let's see if you can play that along with the record. We start playing on air, live. It got me fired. <laughs> I get to Atlanta, and it became a hit. The biggest rocker in Atlanta, 96 Rock. They turn around, they went nuts. I was like, hey, Space Ghost is on Friday, by the way, folks. Don't miss Space Ghost. Be another round of Stump the Hand. And it was great. Playing it on your hands. Wow, man. And you know there are like three guys out in the weeds somewhere just going, Hey, man, did they just like fart Zeppelin? <laughs> Why do I kind of like it? It was awesome. Because, so you, I fell into Space Ghost, and then that opened the door to other weirdness. Um, FX came out of the blue, seven years of just fewer discretion advised. And you had to sound ominous because the show was filthy dirty. Again, mom, rest her soul. She would watch no matter what time something of mine would air. And, you know, I'd be sitting there falling asleep at like midnight. And, and she'd say, that was really good. She'd hear the tag. The following program is rated TVMA LSV. It contains adult language, sexual situations, and extreme violence. It is intended only for mature audiences. Fewer discretion advised. That was a really good tag, honey. <laughs> and then somebody on the show would say something controversial, and oh, poor mom, she'd go, Did that just say, that's that your mind? And I'm like, yes. Ah, oh, that show of yours. Is your big head. Did that just say PJ? Yeah, they just said that. And it wasn't the one with the bear. Yeah. Yes, they, they said that. Well, I want to switch it up to the audience real quick, but I did have one last question for you. Oh, one last? Okay. Clearly, you and your mother were very close. Oh, tremendously. Would you attribute a lot of your success to uh, her inspiration and how big of a role she had in your life? She was so naturally funny. I mean, I, over the years doing what we do, you kind of steer yourself into whatever self-guided style you have. Mom was just naturally funny. We were in this foofy restaurant. Couple of quick story arcs. <laughs> Some woman spills her water, and Mom was that lady. Oh, poor dear, couldn't hold her water. <laughs> that was Mom, and you're sitting there going, oh my God, why didn't I think of that? How quick was that? One time we're at a foo-foo restaurant and I start taking the little very civilized beaten biscuits and I start jamming them in my cheeks. And it's back, you know, now you can't say anything about how a person is tilted personality-wise in a certain way. But this, this very sweet waiter comes over and says, Is everything okay here? <laughs> I'm out to here like this. And I looked at him and said, remember whatever you do, whoever comes to you with this Barzini deal, that is the traitor. The next thing you know, I got every waiter in the building at the table going, I'll do the Godfather again. <laughs> and then the whole damn restaurant's watching. Well, I remember what they did to my beautiful son. 
I want you to use all your powers and talents so the most mother doesn't see them like this. We have to have an open casket. Use all your powers to make my son. I will do, Godfather. Ah, this is one of them. They're sending booze to the table next. I'm 15 and they're sending booze to the table. Mom's like, oh hell, what's it gonna hurt at this point? Yeah, go ahead, take the opium. It might settle you the hell down. <laughs> Can we split a rock with your son? No, and, and that's one thing I'm proud to say, as crazy as I am, I never did. But I've had enough stuff in the prescription world that I can tell you, technically up here, it's a sack of squirrels running loose. <laughs> but in, sorry, in summary, so you would say that your mother had a huge impact on your, the success that you have enjoyed? We just, we were best friends from the get-go. And, you know, I still, it's almost five years now, and I have come to one resolution. I'm. You know, you don't want to shake it, first off, and I'm not shaking it, that second off, sometimes you see some trigger and you're just sobbing. Um, you know, it, it makes no sense at all, but I can't watch Forrest Gump because of Sally Damfield. Back in the trap, mama, back the trap, up the heaven. You just want to smack Tom Hanks. The one minute you're laughing, you're, you know what, uh oh, we have a runner, Sector D. Sector D sees her, sees her. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I've had enough of his personal anecdotes about his family. <laughs> that man is much too open. He's an open friggin' book, that guy. It just makes me sick. Wait, I was gonna do my colonoscopy joke. I just had that with my brilliant friend, Victor Wakakwa who's one, I swear, Wakakwa, he's Nigerian. I said, if you could just do one thing before they put the propofol, I said, if you don't mind this time when I wake up in recovery, if you could not be spooning me singing three times a woman, that'd be great. <laughs> I would really prefer that. All right, I'm gonna turn it to the audience real quick. We have time for about two, three questions. Oh, really? Yeah. God, we've eaten up 40 minutes already with All my right. big mouth. For the record, I adored my mother. She was hysterical and brilliant and uh, just nobody better. She was so kind to people. I'm going one more. She was so kind to people. There was this hysterical little black girl coming out of a restaurant in Ybor City one year. And she and mom just hit it up. They're standing there in the corner yapping away a mile a minute about whatever. And the girl said, oh, I love your watch. <laughs> and she said, that's my son. She said, Space Ghost is your son? And mom says, here, takes the watch off, hands it to the girl. That was mom. And on the way back, of course, I'm going, you know that was, uh, that was number eight. <laughs> you, you gave your number eight watch away, mom. She's like, oh, you'll get more. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I don't think there are going to be any more early numbers, but you know, that was her. So, yeah, she, she was very generous and kind with everybody. So, I have not shaken it. Thank you for, <laughs> thanks for your, you for your support. Thank you. So, your questions. Yes, yeah, hello. Please raise your hand and I'll make my way to you. It's like a terrible version of Beat the Press. <laughs> That's up for debate. Helen, what was her name? Helen, Helen, I can't remember her last name. No, Helen from Associated Press, Thomas. Sorry. Right. That one got nothing. <laughs> Shout it out, because even with the hearing aids, I'm, I'm getting nowhere today. Uh, how many episodes of Space Ghost that became an improv episode? How, how many episodes did we do? That became sort of improv episodes. Oh, uh, well, you know, um, Adam West was one of my favorites. <laughs> And it wasn't like whole things. There were, just, there were just chunks that they would go through and go, that's funny. End of session one time, I just went, dee, 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 dee. just, you know, like, we're done. Dee, 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 dee. Walk, walk it out, and Lazo goes, that thing he did there at the end, 
Put that over the closing credits. So you got William Street stolen from Mark 7. I don't know how Jack Webb never came back from the grave and sued us, but you know, the timpani and the big sweaty hand and Mark 7. But there I was right in the middle of that going. <laughs> um, the Adam West line where I go, oh, okay, see you at the auto show. <laughs> that came out of nowhere. The Brantford Mush, that was scatting, you know about. I can almost find something every time. There was one we couldn't use with Russell Johnson. I didn't recognize him. And Russell had gotten larger than we were used to seeing the professor. I walk in the control room and I go, who's that pant load? <laughs> it's just one of my favorite Lettermanisms. Which, by the way, Letterman loved the show, which is how we got Spike Ferriston to write one, who was a supervising producer on Seinfeld. Very funny guy. We got Sir Jewel and Mujibur, and we got Larry Bud Melman. So that was our Letterman tribute, and it was totally not by accident. Conan nearly got me fired because I thought since he was doing the show, it would be cool to call NBC and say, thanks for uh, gracing us with, uh, you know, being on the show and everything. And I guess one of his handlers called and said, what's that guy doing? How dare he call NBC looking to say hello and say thank you. That's the rudest thing we've ever heard of. A peasant like George Lowe calling us. Mind you, in the day you could call the voiceover booth and get part of That's how I talked to Don a half an hour. You could just call out of the blue. Sound like you know what you're doing. I did. I said, voice booth, please. And she's like, hold on. You know, beep, beep. Beep, beep. Live booth. I said, yes, Don Pardo in. And this is back when they were doing the live booth days, where it was like, uh, Days of Our Lives on NBC is brought to you by One Quarter Cup Beauty, Beauty Bar Cafe. And that'd be it, but they were doing all that stuff live. Yeah. All right, got time for one more. We're good, aren't we? Is my watch that far off? No, we got... Oh, you got Shriners coming in? Yeah, we got one minute. Oh, one minute. Holy mackerel. Hey there. Hi there. Oh there. <laughs> um, good seeing you. Uh, we usually uh, see you uh, whenever you're at Dragon Con in Atlanta. Always. Oh, you you come to st uh, Stories with Uncle George? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, God uh, bless you. Yeah, you know, we, we uh, enjoy seeing oh. you do uh, Let's Treat Pants and stuff like You that. don't want it, do you? Oh, Are you asking about the pants with only one minute to spare? Oh, uh, I don't know if this crowd would do it. We always do one of the things that he's witnessed in person is let's trade pants. And I've had people take off pants with strangers now for, what is it, seven years? Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah but um, my, my question is, is with, um, with Adult Swim bringing back um, a lot of like, the older uh, shows, with Aqua Teen, of course, coming back, um, would you be interested in uh, if they were to bring back another Space Ghost series, maybe something more along the lines of like Space Ghost coming back? It's funny. If they would let me go off more, yeah. which is inevitable at a certain age. <laughs> but yeah, I would always, I would always entertain doing another one. They'd have to do it for, you know, screen actors. Yeah. I didn't know anything at the time. I did a whole bunch of stuff that was not screen actors, and it's like, oh. You mean, that's how I get protected for this? Oh, so, you know, and they were always trying to rewrite the deals, like, well, okay, we're not going to pay that anymore for a show, but we will give you $1,000 each time you have to reread. Well, the writers thought that meant carte blanche, so they kept changing scripts. And I'd come in seven, eight, nine times on a show. Well, okay. We're not going to do the $1,000 reread anymore. It always worked out. Yeah. Uh, because folk art was cheap then. And that's, that's where my retirement lies. On my walls. I just can't bring myself to sell anything. But yeah, I, if they ever brought back uh, a reboot, I'd love to do it. Yeah, here's hoping. I mean, especially with like uh, YouTube and stuff that, they can just do like a digital only. I have been tempted on occasion to maybe do like a weekly podcast with terrible music 
and just talk to people, have fun, take a couple of calls, yeah. uh, you know, half hour a week, something like that. And, and then the part of my brain that goes, oh, American Pickers, you, know, then you just <laughs> turn on the TV and you're back in the chair. It's easy to do that. Oh, I couldn't begin to pay you that for that Fabergé spider. That's got to be worth at least seven dollars. I'll give you three and a half dollars. I think Mike was real fair with us on the Fabergé spider we done so. Thank you, American. <laughs> then the lady starts stalking wherever they live. I found out my spider was worth a half million damn dollars. You gave me three and a half bucks. This is what's wrong with me. I watch too much TV. You want Jim Nance before I go? Go for it. God himself could come down from heaven at the 18th to congratulate the winner. Here's Jim Nance. Well, it looks like. On 18, some excitement. It seems the savior of mankind is arrived. Oh, over to 14 right now, where Tiger Woods is teeing up. <laughs> yep, yep, but God's over on 18. Over to 14 with Tiger Woods. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen.